Hi, this is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. <coughs> So, there is a, 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 a very challenging thing in, um, you can move a little bit to the side, um, there is something very challenging in representing um, a certain group with the way you look, with the way you dress, because people sometimes, or most of the time, they have their um, thoughts that, uh, like certain expectations of what you're going to talk about, what you're going to present, what you're going to reveal to them. But the truth is that even though that I am part of a certain section in the world, and course part of the Jewish nation, it's a clear and obvious thing, and I think that the point that I'm usually coming and speaking from is not from my Judaism. It's true that I found myself inside Judaism, but the beginning of my process of awareness, finding um, myself as a spiritual being in a spiritual world and a spiritual mission um, was not as part as a religious uh, person as a part of the from a religious community I was looking for the truth and I was desperate to to find it I was asking every person around me if you know something about it and when the pieces of the puzzle um, came together I found myself in that picture that was building itself as a Jewish person and then I started to be observant and to keep to all mitzvot but that was not the purpose of my search and for a certain while as a Jewish um, truth seeker means as a Baal Tshuva I was um, in a certain trap in a certain prison in my mind and it took me many years to, to realize that I'm running in circles and I'm not achieving anything while just being religious and being observant and keeping to our mitzvot by the orders and by the commandments and by the rules and regulations and guidings of rabbis. And after 12 years of running in circles, I realized that it's not what I was looking for in the first place, but it took me a long time to set myself free out of that maze. Because over there, and it's not only the Jewish Orthodox community, the closed one in the ghettos in Jerusalem, it's every community. People are usually justifying themselves always and making everyone think that they already found the truth and that they're holding in the best place in the world. It can be to the kind of people that are sending their children to learn in Yale or sending their children to the army or moving to one neighborhood. Or it, 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 it doesn't matter at all. Like to artists, to videographers, like, and, and to those ones that are taking drugs. Everyone will justify their lifestyle and gonna try to describe it and to tell it to other people as the best in, 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 the, in the world. 
But the truth is that they're doing it only because that they are afraid to deal with all the lackings of, of their life and they rather to reject the external world away from them and to block themselves in their own ghetto. And over there it's familiar, it's known, everyone feels comfortable, no one is, is shaking their, their, their stability, no one is challenging their life, no too many questions, everything is familiar and known and expected, no big surprises. So it's, it's comfortable life. It's horrible life, yes. It's horrible life. Because in those, <coughs> that kind of life, there is no place for imagination, there is no place for dreams, there is no place for goals, for, 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 for hopes. There is no place also for redemption. Because the redemption is when all the walls of separation will be cracked and break finally. And everyone will find a way how to flow in harmony together. All the sections, all the groups, all the communities suddenly will become organs of the same body. So that's the goal of, of the wide world, of the creation. Now, as long as people are hiding in their own prisons and everyone are just building the walls of separation, just to block the, the world from, from, from threatening their uh, security and stability and safety. So by doing that, by letting fears control our lives, no matter in which section we are at, we are rejecting the, the, the true potential of our existence and, and, and postponing their complete redemption to come. And when I realized that, I decided to break out from my own prison and my wife and I, we took our children and it was one Shabbat, one Saturday noon, we decided to walk out of our neighborhood. It, ju it just like, it was, it was like a thunder in a, in a bright, in a sunny day. We started to walk out of our neighborhood and suddenly the sky were blue and everything was beautiful outside of the neighborhood. For 12 years we lived in a certain neighborhood in Jerusalem and we almost didn't go out. And suddenly we realized that we forgot about all the rest of Jerusalem and we were stuck in one place, one area for 12 years couldn't realize that we are prisoners in that, in that area. And when we went out, suddenly everything was blooming. Everything was beautiful. People were smiling to us and saying, Shalom Aleichem, and how are you doing? And hello, Shabbat Shalom. <coughs> and we start to realize that, that there, there is more to this world than what that we thought that there is before. And we went to a certain park and we sat all together and we had fun and it was such so much fun and we enjoyed it and we didn't do anything. We couldn't mingle with the people, we didn't felt like talking to no one, no one approached to us and no one said hello. It was just like being quiet and, and, and smiling and positive and we felt different but it felt good to, to set ourselves free. I have a friend that told me once that his journey of finding his true self started when from school they sent them <coughs> it was a public school in the US and they sent them to a camp in a church in he was not Christian, he didn't believe in, in all those things, but only the fact that he found himself in that camp, even though that people talk to them about religion and about Jesus and whatever, just the fact that he was there separated from his family and in a different atmosphere, a different environment, not obligated to the, to the 
company codes to the to the society codes of, of his neighborhood, of his friends, of his family, he started to grow. And for me also something very similar happened in the army. When I finished my years in school and I joined the army, my environment changed. And then I met so many people and those people, the new conversations and the fact that I was not obligated to like to, 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 to be who that people have expected me to be and I felt more free to be myself was allowing me to think deeper and to change and I have been. So it doesn't matter where you are and where you're coming from. The thing that you need to check about yourself is if you, in that place that you are at right now, you're allowing yourself to be who you really are in the nature of your creation. Because if we believe that there is one truth, if we believe that there is truth somewhere, so if we will search for it, we should believe that we must find it because there is one truth. Like if there is a center to, to the world, so we just need to dig. We just need to go and to search for that center. No matter where you start, you can be on a mountain, you can be on a, on a, in a valley, it doesn't matter. Maybe your way will be shorter to the core, maybe yours will be longer. It doesn't matter. Maybe the ground will be harder and more thick and, and more hard to, to dig, but still you're in the right direction. At least you are digging to the core, to the center. So it doesn't matter where you are as long as you're searching for the truth. And when you believe that there is truth, you don't need to aim to a certain truth, like the truth of the Jewish Orthodox, or the truth of the modern Jew or Jews, or, or Christians, or Muslims, or, or Hinduism. It doesn't matter. It's if you will search for the truth, you will find it no matter where you're born. You will realize who is the real creator of the universe because the one that created it, he was the one that created it. He is the one that is creating it. The one that is supervising on it is still supervising on it at it right now while we're talking. The one that gives you life, he's the one that gives you life. And if we will search for our life to find, okay, so what is my source of life? Where am I receiving my life from? What is the source of my power? What gives me the motivation? What gives me the, the tools? What gives me the wisdom? The, the, what is arousing me to live, to continue, to dream, to hope? If you will find that, you will find what that you're asking for, what that you need, what that is good for you. Now, all people are different, and we are, and we cannot change it. And that's the nature of the creation. So we're not supposed to change ourselves to be similar, because it's the only thing that we cannot do. How can I be similar to you when we've been created differently? An apple can be an orange? No, no matter how many surgeries you will make, an apple won't be an, an, an orange. It, they are different fruits. So you're tall and I'm short. You're, you're wise and I'm not so. You have a great memory and I forget my, 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 my address. So my home address, I need to, to check on my phone what's my address. Every person is different. and and. The fact that you have certain skills doesn't make you better. You can be an amazing orange and it doesn't mean that you are better than, than a pathetic apple. Because someone else is being fed only by apples and he, he's allergic to, to amazing oranges like you. And a friend once told me a, 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 a joke, a story, that there was a competition between the animals in the forest and everyone were trying to, to, to jump uh, higher. Who was the animal that can uh, jump higher? So when the cheetahs and, and the deers and like those kangaroos came, so they were very active in that competition, but when the cow came, like she barely was able to, to participate with the elephant came, he couldn't do anything. The crocodile, he was just like standing and looking for the, what, like, so, there are competitions 
that not everyone meant to take part of. And it doesn't mean that you're a better animal than, than the other. Like, because that you don't know how to jump, it makes you worthless or hopeless or not important. Like, think about that, like, beautiful elephant. He doesn't know how to jump, he, but, but he's an amazing animal. But he cannot jump ever. The cow, she's fantastic, but she can't jump. So, also your children, like, one is a cow, one is a cheetah, one is a kangaroo, but, but one is a chubby elephant and he needs to have his place. You know, if you listen to his nature, you're going to realize that he can walk 90 miles without drinking and, 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 and he, he has his qualities of, of those ancient giants, elephants, and, and, and they have those qualities. And those ones that are jumping so fast and so high and running and so, they don't have those qualities. Everyone are different and everyone have their weaknesses, but everyone are also carry within such treasures that no one else in the world has. And you need to find your treasures. And instead of comparing yourself and trying to attach to yourself the treasures that you recognize in other people, some mission that you will never accomplish because it's never meant to be. Focus on your own treasures and just be aware to them. Realize who you are, who you really are. A person came to me in Miami after one of my classes and he told me, I heard one of your CDs 40, 50 times. And he said that every time that I put the CD into the CD player, it answered the questions that I was facing in that moment. And he said it was a divine thing. It was all from heaven. Every time I put that CD into the CD player, I heard the answer to my situation again and again, one day after the next. How can we explain that? Was it because that my CD was so special? The answer is no. The answer is for sure no. The answer is that the Creator, He knows exactly how to use the world for its own purpose. How to provide answers from different books, from different books, from different, um, from different people, from different sources to answer your questions to provide solutions to your life issues. And from heaven, they are assisting you to find what that you're asking, what that you need. And you should count on the hand of the supervision, of the divine supervision on your life, and to check yourself, am I searching for the truth? Am I doing as much as I can to seek for the truth and to try to improve and to get better and to do what that I should do and to accomplish the mission of my life and to find the purpose of, of my creation. If I'm doing it and I am finding my answers, but maybe not in the highest places, maybe not from the holiest teachers, not from the most divine righteous ones, but still I am finding my answers. I do connect through those links that are available for me served on my silver plate. When you find that, you should believe in yourself that you are going in the right path. Because like we said before, there are many, many ways to the truth. And if there is one truth, if you will desire it, you will find it. Like the, the verse is saying, that the Creator is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. When you call the truth, even if you don't know its name, one will call it the cosmos, one will call it God, one will call it my Lord, one will call it heaven, one will call it Hashem, everyone will call it in His name. He will call the center, the core of creation, the heart that is running the world, the, 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 the divine supervisor that created and creating the world in real time, in the present. And when you're calling Him in your language, from your heart, using your power of speech, your concepts, your ideas, by that you're revealing your honest heart. 
and you're calling him with truth, and by that you're opening that access for him to answer you and for yourself to be answered when you're honest. When we're desiring things that are not ours, like dreams of to be orthodox, to convert, to, to, to be righteous, to be pure, I don't know, setting goals in heaven, things that we are not connected to, we're not aware to. When we're doing that, by that we are disconnecting ourselves from reality. And we are decreeing on ourselves to live in a dream, in a fantasy. Oh yes, I am going to be righteous one day. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm going to uh, receive heaven in the world to come. I'm going to inherit heaven. Like, imaginations. You don't know. You don't know. You should know if you feel that you are being honest to be a person of truth, to know that you, excuse me for the, for the stupid way of putting things, to be a man enough to say, <laughs> you, in, to say, I, I tried, I did the best that I can, to be a person of truth, that you'll be able to say, I did the best that I could. Like, I don't know what I achieved. I don't know if I accomplished. I don't know if I completed. But I know that I tried. I know that with the tools that I had, I did the best. I needed to be a mother. I needed to be a husband. I needed to work for my living, for my children's support. I, I, I needed to take care of my emotional scars. I had to heal myself from my childhood's trauma. I had to. If you know the truth about yourself, and you are walking toward that truth with an honest heart, with a, with a wishing soul, with a happy heart, with, a, with good will, with pure intentions, you're good. And then you should be happy and complete with yourself and to know that Hashem, that the Creator, that God is with you, that the Almighty is with you. And you cannot doubt yourself when you check yourself and you see that you are good. If you check yourself and you see that you are lazy, if you check yourself and you see that you are making huge, too big discounts to yourself, so then, okay, you need to fix yourself, go and work on yourself. But if you see that you are working, you cannot hate yourself and blame yourself and, 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 and criticize yourself on not being in a different level or because except of doing the best that you can do, you cannot do anything. And it doesn't matter who you are, because the Creator created you as He wished, as He wanted, as He realized it will be the best way to create you, to bring you down to the world, and to treasure His treasures, spiritual treasures, inside of you, to put His godly sparks inside of you. Those are the qualities of your spirit, of your soul. And He put them and planted them inside of you for you to keep them and use them, to protect them and to share the world with that bounty that has been treasured inside of you, to let the world enjoy your talents and your abilities and your wisdom and your sensitivity. And you should go with that and flow with that and believe in yourself with all your power and not to give up to the external outside world that is forcing you to change and to become like some mm, idols that they are, mm, the world are, are bowing to and, and idolizing and, and surrendering themselves to. Be who you are in the nature of your creation. Reveal the good that lives inside of you. Face and challenge your fears not to be scared of them, not to let them reject you for, from being who you meant to be, who you dream to be, who you believe that you should be, that you can be, that you want to be, that you desire to be, and to go with that all the way with no end. And that's the mission. The mission is not to become like an army of whatever. All the world cannot become the same. It's, it's a joke. It's an illusion to think. The world is too beautiful and too colorful to change. It just needs to shine. We just need to remove the pill, the coverings of, of darkness from the inner beauty that every nation holds and every person holds inside of himself. One can play the violin in ways that like, hey, you can go nuts, you know, like 
you can never do that. So he should drop his talent and to sit in yeshiva and learn Torah? Nonsense. He should never put his violin aside. He should always play. There is a person that can dance like an angel, like, like, like a butterfly that flies in heaven. She should stop dancing? Are you crazy? The Creator, God gave her that talent. It's fantastic. How can she stop? Who will permit from heaven for her to stop? She's not allowed to stop. She needs to dance and to use her dance to reveal that that dance is a spiritual dance. That it came down from heaven. That it's an inner movement that drives her to dance. And she should do it with modesty and with happiness and with joy and with a good purpose. And not, be, not with bad intentions or whatever. And every person should use the, the tools that he's been blessed with and to believe in himself and to go and to spread them in the world. And also here in uh, New Orleans. Well, may the Creator forgive us on all of our sins and, <laughs> and open gates of uh, mercy on all of us, that all of our, all of our goodwill and, and honest prayers will be answered and that we will believe in ourselves and going to recognize the finger and the hand of the Creator that made us as beautiful as we are and to just use that beauty and to make the world a better place to live in. Thank you very much for coming to this wonderful class and may they bless us all from heaven. Amen. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.